Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg had a piece in the Financial Times yesterday. There's a lot going on in there, but at only 21 paragraphs, there's no real detail. It's basically about regulation. He says he'd like there to be clear rules for his company to follow, that society should have that conversation about what the best rules would look like. He doesn't talk about his planned cryptocurrency Libra and what rules that would follow. He gives no details about election integrity, political ads, privacy, online safety, data portability, or the Facebook Supreme Court, also known as the Oversight Committee, that's designed to decide what Facebook's content decisions should be, basically censorship and deplatforming. To be clear, Facebook content policy allows it to deplatform or silence voices that it disagrees with, but it doesn't fact check politicians when, it, when they micro target Facebook users using paid political advertising. And that is something which affects elections globally. If you can find it, I'd recommend reading the piece, the Zuckerberg FT piece, not because Zuck is such a trustworthy guy, but because he's laying out the case for investing in Facebook for people who decide where money goes. And that means he has to be as honest as he's able to be about the public challenges that Facebook faces. And to show the approach that Facebook is taking to make money, provide a service and limit harm. Zuck has the world's best PR, lobbyists and lawyers working for him. They'll be guiding him on how to talk in the media and in front of politicians. Though Zuckerberg has testified to congressional committees in the US and to the European Parliament, he has never come to the UK. His chief operating officer, Sheryl Sandberg, was here just last month, despite her boss refusing to testify to the UK Parliament Digital Culture Media Sport Select Committee. That's how little they think of the UK's rule system. It means nothing to them, unlike in Brussels or Washington DC. To be fair, the UK Select Committee isn't binding. You don't have to tell the truth and you don't even have to appear. It's regarded as honourable to do so, but not obligatory. There's no punishment or enforcement criteria that forces honesty, unlike in the US where lying in front of a committee can land you in jail. Let us contrast for a moment Mark Zuckerberg with Julian Assange. Zuckerberg hired former Prime Minister Nick Clegg at the end of 2018, a year after not showing up to the UK Parliament. And Facebook is openly used to, mis openly used to mislead the UK public into voting for politicians whose claims are not even checked. Whereas Julian Assange of WikiLeaks has only ever revealed the truth about what governments are doing in the name of the people. And he is not only facing extradition to the UK, uh, from the UK to the US on charges of espionage, but he has not made any money giving away private citizens' data, which is actually Facebook's business model. The Assange extradition trial goes ahead on Monday the 24th in a week. The UK media have been near silent about this matter, despite having published his stories in the past. This is because, to some degree, the UK media is in the pocket of the UK state, though it could also be argued that the state is in the pocket of the media, the press barons. The propaganda machine doesn't care about free speech. It believes in keeping the plebs entertained. The BBC is an infantilization machine. Inform the public, but play down the gravity of information. This is distortion. It's why the BBC won't talk about Assange, nor will the FT, even though in the US it's the Trump's team's contact with Assange that has led to one of the president's former close advisers, Roger Stone, being convicted. I should say it's the alleged contact because what appears to be happening is that Roger Stone is actually lying about the contact he's had with Assange. Apparently he really hasn't had very much, possibly even none. Um, so yeah, close advisers, Roger Stone was con convicted in November uh, over lying to Congress over being Trump's access man to WikiLeaks. Steve Bannon said that he was, although I don't know whether that could be believed. Stone sentencing is happening this week and Trump has been pushing for the prosecutors to quit, uh, which some have, and to be as lenient as possible on Roger Stone. So the relevance of Assange on certain elections may actually have been just as significant as Zuckerberg, basically, for the US. But now that Trump wants to silence Assange, who clearly knows too much, the information given to the public has dropped to near zero. And instead, we're treated to front page headlines about reality TV and things like that. It will be interesting to see which papers cover the Assange case and in what way. It's more than a mere criminal trial. He is one of the world's most significant political prisoners. And whereas Jeff Bezos and Bill Gates pick up enormous contracts to look after government data, 
in the US and the UK. And Mark Zuckerberg has huge access to the publics when a small platform such as WikiLeaks publishes the truth about government impropriety. Suddenly, the entire mainstream media machine is busy looking at other things. Where are the journalists in this country? Is there no respect for the truth? Do they all think it's irrelevant? Platforms need to step up and cover this issue now.